we felt very early on that when we established a clinical lab that whole genome sequencing was going to be the future. So we really didn't step in to any of the interim assays before diving all the way into whole genomes. In many cases, sequencing someone's entire genome provides them with better data than just sequencing, let's say, the exome or parts of the genome. Our goal was to integrate whole genome sequencing into the regular practice of medicine. Before that, it was used as a research tool and it was very limited in terms of who we could offer it to through the hospital. It's been really neat to watch us be able to participate in opening a clinic and seeing patients where genome sequencing is part of our standard of care toolbox for the patients that we see, as well as working with our scientists here at Hudson Alpha who are trying to kind of on that, that gene discovery side of trying to figure out new associations between changes in the DNA and patients and the symptoms that they have. My choice to come into genetics and genomics was actually very personal. While I was in labor um, with my daughter, uh, a blood clot developed and uh, she was born without a heartbeat. Um, and after testing, you know, later on on me, they found out that I have a rare blood clotting disorder. I have antithrombin 3 deficiency. If I had known about that ahead of time, I, she would still be here today. I think the, the low hanging fruit of today is the rapid genome sequencing. It turns out that uh, a study that was done recently uh, out in California at Rady Children's, they had done rapid genomes in about 170 or so children, and they were getting diagnostic rates of about 40%. And so these were sick newborns. And in about a third of those cases, it changed management. I think a game changer for us and how quickly we get our genetic information back. That testing that used to take six to eight weeks now comes back in 72 hours. And so that that's another game changer for us and really impacts clinical management. So laboratories all over the United States, us included, go back to our old genomes and look to see if we can find answers in cases where we couldn't find the answer before. I think that we've made great advances and that children are surviving and thriving and doing well. And I think we're able to provide more care and support to children that otherwise might not have survived in the past. Ideally, our health system would be in a place in 10 years in which genomics is really just a natural integrated set of data that physicians and patients can use to guide their health care. So having sort of been involved in whole genome sequencing now for more than 10 years, I can say that there are, at the present time, not the same challenges that we had in the past. In the past, the technology wasn't as mature as it is now, and the informatics were not as mature as they are now. And that means more regular and more widespread access to genetic testing. Also, the, the infrastructure necessary to help make that a reality, to help make sure that the physicians and the patients have access to that. And also, systems in which the data is portable and accessible so that as patients move from health system to health system and from physician to physician, their data goes with them and the physicians they see can act on that information appropriately. Taking a genome first approach to patients with unknown conditions, even things that seem common like obesity is really a good idea. So that's really the future of genetics, genetic medicine, you never know what's really hiding under the surface that might affect you in ways you never imagined. You know, that's really what brought me to Hudson Alpha to learn genetics and genomics and to try to help people from experiencing the kinds of things I've gone through.